You're listening to the Full Core Press with your host, Drew Duncan. Don't you dare touch that dial. to the Full Court Press. I am your host, Drew Duncan. We're live on 99.5 ESPN Radio, employers only, 24-hour sports station. You can be part of the show by calling in at 620-343-6143. That's 620-343-6143. Additionally, you can find me on social media. Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter is all at Drew Duncan 83 that's at Drew Duncan 83 across the board, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And if you want to be a part of the show by calling 620-343-6143 is the number. That's 620-343-6143. This is 99.5 ESPN Radio, Emporia's only 24-hour sports station. Jalen Hurts and the saga at Alabama even though it really officially began during the national championship game when they were brought back by the backup quarterback, Tua. They have now ran into another issue as Jalen Hurts' dad has officially taken to the media. Now, these reports are per the Bleacher Report, uh, per SB Nation. So uh, these are not just rumorville. These are exact quotes. And again, none of this has come from actually Jalen Hurts himself. There are players that are speaking out for him, I guess you could say. Uh, I I guess you could say his father is acting on Jalen's behalf. Nick Saban has chimed in about how he feels about this whole situation. Now, before I get into this, I want to be very clear. This is not any indication that Alabama is falling apart at the seams. I mean, let's be honest. Any of us, whatever team we're a fan of in college football, would love to be in Nick Saban's situation. This is definitely not any indication that this team is is imploding from the inside. It's really not. To me, this is only symptomatic of one issue and one issue only, and that is because they are where they are right now. They are recruiting guys that are all at an extremely high level of athlete. And within those recruiting areas, and this is something that Nick Saban has talked about before, sometimes you get guys who decommit because, you know, you recruit a little too deep because you never know if a guy's going to decommit. So they're covering their bases. And then when you have more than one really phenomenal player commit to your team, especially ones that are in same roster spots, the competition is not only increased, but now you run these types of risks. I mean, that's exactly what's going on here. I mean, seriously, they have more players on that team that could be in the NFL than I think any of us could really ever truly name. I mean, the old adage was about Nebraska back in the mid-90s, especially with that team that ran all over Florida. There were people that wondered how they would do against like the Lions or the Bengals. I'm pretty sure we all believe that Alabama could probably match up with the Cleveland Browns. I mean, that's a thing. So Nick Saban and the Alabama Crimson Tide are not some sort of unstable situation per se, but they have hit kind of a wall here, and it is very unclear how this thing is all going to pan out. So I'm going to read some quotes here. Um, that are from Jalen's father, uh, Avarian Hurt, who is a coach back where he's from, by the way. Um, we're going to read some quotes from Nick Saban, and we're going to talk about it. This is from Jalen Hurt's dad, Avarian Hurt, who says, Coach Saban's job is to do what is best for the team. I have no problem with that. My job is to do what's best for Jalen and make no mistake Jalen is a quarterback, and he wants to play quarterback. He loves Alabama, 
loves Coach Saban and everything about that place. But he wants to play, and he will play. Now, when he was asked if Jalen was not going to be a quarterback, this is and this is exact writing right here from SB Nation. He shakes his head slowly, answers begrudgingly, well, he'd be the biggest free agent in college football history, end quote. That is directly from the mouth of Avarian Hurts, Jalen Hurts, dad, quarterback of the Alabama Crimson Tide. Now, Nick Saban says that per the conversation that Jalen's dad and he had on Saturday, everything is okay. Jalen and everybody is not necessarily falling in line, but they all have an understanding of what the situation is. And that is right now, it is an official quarterback competition. We don't know who the starter is going to be. We will know pretty much come come August, September. And we've seen this before. I mean, remember when Jalen Hurts first got there, uh, when he was a true freshman, nobody knew who the starter was going to be heading into the first USC game, as you may recall. And Jalen played pretty good, and they ended up blowing out USC in the process, by the way. I mean, remember, that was billed as being a huge game. Both teams were ranked in the top five, if I remember correctly. And everybody was just mouth-watering all over that football game. And Jalen does okay in the first half. In the second half, he comes out, makes a lot of phenomenal throws, including that touchdown uh, throw into the corner of the end zone. And that kind of sets everything ablaze. And as we know, Hertz has been in the national championship game now. But the issue was he didn't play very well in the last national championship game that he was in. And, of course, Tua, and I, you know, his last name, Tagovailoa, <laughs> don't be mad at me if I got that wrong, Bama fan. Uh, came in and, and saved the game in the second half. I mean, we all saw it, right? We all saw, we were all witnesses. And then, of course, they had that thrilling overtime win on uh, the play of the game, that long touchdown pass. Back-to-back plays, uh, Alabama ran the same offensive play. And I, I just, you know, here's the deal. Here's going to be this whole entire scenario laid out, Okay. Number one, there is a part of me that understands dads that are stepping in, right? We, we've seen this before. We saw it with Colt McCoy during the national championship game uh, when his son, you know, Colt McCoy's dad, when he was at Texas, stepped in and said, no, McCoy's not going to play in the second half of this game in case he gets hurt really bad. We're not going to blow his ride to the NFL. It's not going to happen. And that was the final word. And that was all the, I mean, there was nothing anybody could do about it. Not even Colt McCoy himself could outrank his dad because of other issues that they have with, you know, college sports. And and it was just, that's it. You're done. You're not playing, bro. You're going to get drafted. Sorry, son. You're out for the rest of this game. It's not the first time. Obviously, everybody knows about LeVar Ball and, and, you know, all the, things that he's gone to the media and said and things that, you know, the way he really hyped up his shoe brand and his son Lonzo and his other kids and how he chooses to raise them and all this other stuff, right? But yet, we're all parents, or at least a good majority, I would think, listening to me, are parents of kids. You know, for instance, there's been the discussion of, would you allow your son uh, to play in the game of football, given the fact that the sport is dangerous and We've seen the rise of concussions and um, all the different lawsuits and, you know, demand. And, you know, we read the article yesterday from Corey Brandon and what he talked about. He was from the University of Oklahoma and saying that basically, look, we were just told your bell is rung and you're fine and all these other things. And so given that, you know, their you know, parents step in and so we're just not going to play to begin with. But once your son or daughter is in a position to be in athletics, then the question is raised as to how much involvement, because we all know that parent that is at little league and peewee games and they're yelling at the top of their lungs and we all just kind of look and go like, dude, really, you know, it's peewee, let the kids have fun. That's really what this level is all about. But we all know that one parent who takes everything really, really, really serious. Some of us are that parent. I'm not saying I am and I'm not condemning anybody who is, but I mean, let's just be honest. There's always that one parent at those games. 
Then, of course, you have the high school level, you know, and look, here's the deal. If Jalen's dad wants to say whatever it is he wants to say, he can. The only thing I really get concerned about at this level or this stage in the game is while Jalen is still a college kid and Jalen is still learning a lot of life lessons, to me, that is what college is really all about. And that is allowing your kids to learn life lessons. There's, you know, there's a quote from Jalen's dad, a variant, who said that Jalen messed up. And I'm paraphrasing there because I can't repeat the language that he used. He said that he told Jalen that he messed up and he opened up this window, is what he said, by playing the way that he did in a national championship game. I don't think any credit is given to the defense, but be that as it may, the bottom line here is, is pushing all that aside. To me, there comes a time, you know, and, and not nobody's the perfect parent. There's no blueprint for being the perfect dad. There's no blueprint for being the perfect mom. It's just the way that it is. But to me, from my standpoint, I, I feel like there comes a time when you have to allow your kids to make decisions. You inform them and you give them the ins and outs and you explain to them the potential things that could happen in both decisions that you make so that way they can make an informed decision. But I feel like that's really all you can do at this level. I don't understand why we would decide to really just kind of step in and take to the media and have these kinds of conversations. I mean, I wonder how these kinds of conversations happen to begin with. You know, I mean, what do you, are you seeing them at the spring game? You know, I mean, how does this stuff even start, to be honest? Like, do you do you call up Jalen's dad out of nowhere and say, I'm so-and-so with such-and-such such magazine and or such-and-such such radio station, I want to talk to you about your son? I mean, who's the one that is stirring the pot here? I mean, to me, that's kind of the question. And I, I think that Nick Saban handled it about as good as he could. I've had a conversation with him last weekend. I don't know where this is coming from. As far as I know, he and I and Jalen are all on the same page. And more importantly, me and my my players are on the same page. I mean, that's and that should be the only deal that we're concerned about. I mean, at some point, you got to let the coach coach. And we all know those people who like to step in and be the coach or step in for their kids. You know, why is it my kid getting more player time? You know, uh, my best friend, his son, played. Um, with the uh, Derby Panthers back home. And one of the things that he discussed when it came to that was the coach eliminated the phone calls and just said, if I get an email from somebody that says, why isn't my coat or why isn't my son or daughter playing? Then what he would simply do is just, Hey, go talk to your positions coach. Talk to your positions coach, get with him, and see where you need to improve. If that doesn't work, then take it up to your coordinator and see where you can improve. And then you can all come to me and we can have a conversation about why your son or daughter is not playing. I mean, to me, that's pretty simple and that's a pretty easy way of doing things. I don't understand why we think... um, we get to control or dictate in any manner where our children play, especially at a university where a coach has been entrusted to do his job. These are things that we've talked about with the Dallas Cowboys, haven't we? Where where a lot of us feel like Jerry Jones had kind of overstepped that boundary and kind of tried to take on this sort of coaches but not coach role and got too involved with the players and the, you know, everything else and was going over coaches' heads and the credit that he took away from Jimmy Johnson and Barry Switzer and, you know, the issues with him and Bill Parcells. I mean, we're kind of going along that same thing. There's, look, there was a pipeline and there was a channel to go through. And one of the things that in the professional level that people said that they loved about Pat Bolin of the Denver Broncos was he was very hands off. He put people in those positions to do what their jobs were to do. And coaches got to coach and players got to play and executives got to exec. I mean, that's all there is to it. I don't understand why we constantly feel the need 
to run to the media or get on social media. I mean, we've seen this before with the Denver Broncos where dads have flared up and said, you know, this and this and this. And I mean, I just, I don't understand. I mean, at some point, let go of the reins. We can't be in control forever as parents. We are always going to be parents. And I think every one of us understands that. There is a fear every time your kid is out on that field. And there is a level of disappointment, of course, when we feel like our kids are not getting the recognition that they deserve for whatever reason or whatever stage or level in life that they're at. I mean, we, we've all been there. But by the same token, would any of you call your kid's job, at, let's say they're 25 years old, and go, you know, he's been working really, really hard? I, I can guarantee you right now, my mom and dad, they're not going to call my work where I'm at and say, you know, my son is there every single day. What's your issue? If I went to them and presented a problem, it wouldn't happen. And if it did, I'd probably be out the door, to be honest with you. But it, 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 because it just, it, it doesn't line up. You know, my mom told me when I was 16 years old that it won't be long before I leave the nest. I mean, they were, you know, kind of along that level when I was like 12, 13. I won't be long now before you leave the nest. I hope you're ready. I mean, I'm not saying that that's the right way to approach it, but I'm just telling you that I think at some point we as parents need to kind of let go, let our kids learn and gain those life experiences. You know, especially if we want our kids to be at pro ball level and, and, you know, be executives in life, you know, because being at that level of life means you have to make all of your own decisions. Yeah, sure. Some people have advisors and things like that, but at the end of the day, you still make your own choice. You still make your own choice. Vavion's dad wants to get involved, fine. But let's not take away from the fact that Tua had a phenomenal game. And let's also not take away from the fact that Jalen was the primary reason to me that the Alabama Crimson Tide got to where they were. Because for so long, this is a football team that was predicated strictly upon uh, upon the run. And he turned them into an updated, modernized, option, run-pass offense. He gave them those different things. And he did it with having, I think, three different offensive coordinators, if I remember correctly. He's never had the same offensive coordinator since he's been there. So Jalen is a phenomenal athlete. I'm not going to take anything away from the kid, but I just feel like sometimes a little too zealous, a little too out of place. I've got a question that has come in, and I'm going to get to it after the break. A question about WSU transfers. We're going to be talking a little bit about that. Don't forget, we've got Kansas City Chiefs football on the menu. We're going to be talking all things NBA playoffs today. We'll be back right after this. This is the Full Court Press. We're live on 99.5 ESPN Radio and four years only. 24-hour sports station. Don't you dare touch that dial.